Carl Faubert sought information for a living. That is to say that ever since he returned from Korea, after having served with the armed forces, he had been working as a private investigator in Montreal. William Hamilton, a rich industrialist, had gotten in touch with him regarding a simple vandalism issue, nothing to write home about. Not worth hiring a private eye either, just so he can drive for hours on rough roads. But that's how it had always been. The client pays, Carl gets it done. They had set up to meet at the general store, his client's business. Well, actually, the entire village had William Hamilton's name written all over it. When the roads were bad, muddy, or snowed in, it was customary around these parts to close them off. But it was also customary to ignore those signs entirely and drive there anyway. Hamilton never mentioned a road-blocking barrier. Why was it needed here in the back of beyond? That would, however, be a mystery for another day. Carl had waited long enough for someone to come and raise it. Hamilton, no doubt, knew who managed the barrier. Carl wanted to give him a call, but that would have been too easy, though, as sure enough, the line was acting up. Hamilton is waiting for Carl in the general store. It was time for him to get down to business. William Hamilton enjoyed a lavish country house built in the very heart of the northern forests, not too far from here. The local populace was divided when it came to the affluent men. Some saw a wealthy philanthropist dedicated to improving the region's economy. Others an aging Englishman who would do anything to further his fortunes. And those ones hated him enough to go on about scheming against him. Hamilton had recently acquired a few local businesses. But the last straw was the reopening of a mine which gave rise to a wave of protests and threats from the Cree people. Given these circumstances, Carl reckoned that a good number of people must be feeling compelled to oppose Hamilton in one way or another. So far, only the industrialist's house had been a target, but soon enough, Carl thought, the target would become the man himself. to get out of there. The cold and the pain required urgent care. The dry 
driver had taken off. It was still best to check it out and leave nothing to chance. Carl needed help. It was a small, locked box engraved with the letters W.H. Carl thought about taking it. Nothing was to be left to chance. Such heart-wrenching Nordic poetry, that was. But Carl didn't care much about flowery language. This deep in the country, his last hope was to find an abandoned garage or a farm by the roadside. His life depended on it. Scratches did not stop Carl. His mother would be so proud. Even better than he had hoped, Carl Faubert had succeeded once more and was now on his way to new adventures. Carl, like many of his contemporaries, felt like he had more trouble breathing when he wasn't smoking. Cigarette was his own personal breathing assistant. Spread out on a few acres of untouched forest, bellowing caribou, everlasting snow, and undefiled lakes, the Manistan region was no tourist hub. It was said to have been populated for millennia by Cree people, and ever since the industrial era, by the metal mining industry. The truck was running on fumes. Good thing that the general store was close by. Carl had no trouble recognizing his employer. He had been killed. There was no need to be a detective to figure that out. But only a detective could have noticed that the killer had to have been very close, that the fatal blow had been given before the victim even realized.
What could be inside that envelope? Carl was taken aback. He knew this address. It was said to be the address of the P.O. box for the Canadian Secret Service. Carl felt a chill down his spine and had a terrifying realization. If Hamilton was dead, then who was going to pay him? An explosion suddenly occurred outside. The note explained that the garage and the store couldn't be supplied with electricity at the same time. Maintaining his composure, Carl recalled something from his military training. Wolves always stay away from populated areas. Wait, was it about bears? Carl was no electrician, but he could identify a wiring problem when he saw one. Crowbar was stuck under the lift. Notwithstanding Carl's imposing stature, car lifting wasn't part of his skill set yet. According to that log, it seemed like the whole village owed some money to the general store. Carl was far more interested in the bunch of nearby addresses he had just gotten his hands on, though. The snowstorm pummeled everything in its path. Carl was not surprised when he heard no tone. Carl knew that Gilles Lachance was in charge of the general store. That made him one of Hamilton's employees. A very angry employee, as Carl could plainly see. Jumping from that height was akin to tempting death. Perhaps that man on the snowmobile had seen enough of this world already. A nice picture of the Magasin Lachance store, seemingly taken the day it was first opened. It feels frozen in time, from an era long forgotten.
Carl knew straight away where to find the infuriated Gilles Lachance. Any good investigation would have to start there. At long last, the crowbar was within Carl's grasp. Surely it would come in handy at some point. The Polaroid, Carl's long-standing and faithful ally, had seen a share of husbands caught red-handed cheating. There's always something out there waiting to be snapped away. Carl was beginning to know the store and its surroundings like the back of his hand. The seeker had sought. Carl wondered what the hell could that thing be? It looked like a man fossilized in ice. All of a sudden, Carl felt like he was pulled inside a world of dreams, a cold, unknown dimension. Somehow, self-control was slipping from his grasp. To all appearances, this was a hunting log. Better yet, a war diary. engraved numbers mean. A fresh path suddenly appeared before Carl. your frozen hands in hot water. What happened? Now at least he knew who the unfortunate man petrified in ice was. Gilles Lachance, the general store's manager himself. That had to be the worst parking job ever. Who was Carl to judge, though? It may be customary to park like that around these parts, or not.
The crossbow bolt stuck into the wooden stairs reminded Carl of the arrow that was said to have hit Achilles' heel. But who was the intended Achilles this time? The air was freezing right down to the bone. in his back. Another vision took over him. Something was hidden under the stairs. The man grabbed his rifle. Carl felt a sense of dread in him. Their spousal relationship had been cooling down lately. It seemed like secrecy was commonplace in this house. Vision's veil was lifted, and he was back to reality. A reality in which Giselle, Jill's loving spouse, was motionless, frozen in ice. <laughs> 